All right. Welcome into the greatest 23 minutes of your life, or at least for this week. I'm GBG, host of Green Bay Greg, coming at you with episode 14. Uh, maybe it's 13, maybe it's 15. Just kidding. It's episode 14. Uh, and I know that because Mike from Mike on the Mic just did his, and I had to do a quick check to make sure that I was on the correct episode. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me, whether you're joining me on uh, Facebook Live uh, or through our uh, Facebook page, maybe on Twist or through YouTube or on the RTF Sports Network where my show is on at 1 o'clock on Wednesdays. Uh, we actually on the RTF Sports Network, me and the boys from Twist uh, kind of monopolize that 1 o'clock uh, Central time zone. So what I encourage everyone to do is go out for a late lunch if you're at work um, and then slack off for another half hour, hour or so after and watch or listen to our shows. Makes sense. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a problem solver. So let's jump right into it because I got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to jump right into the sports talkers and uh, two things I want to jump into real quick. First of all, the NBA playoffs are starting up this week. And I got to be honest, I usually am not an NBA watching fan. I mentioned this on my show thousands of times. Outside of the green and gold, I'm more of a I'm more of a fan of the stories, and I enjoy watching stories in all sports. Um, but you know, watching the games isn't usually a big deal to me outside of football, but watching the NBA is interesting to me because like on a day like today, there's four games. It's kind of got that NCAA March Madness feel to it. All these playoff games all held in one of three arenas. I'm just becoming a fan of it. Um, it's without fans in the stands, with all of the pomp, pomp and circumstance. It's actually kind of fun to um, watch, uh, you know, the stories that are going on. Um, Apparently, I have a listen. Let's see what let's see what Matt Benz from Benzie's Bit has to say here. Go ahead, Green Bay Greg. Give the drunken Scannies what they want. Matty Benz, to be honest with you, I'm not giving the drunken Scannies what they want. I'm giving the world what it wants. The world wants is my opinions wrapped up in a 23 minute segment, given to you once a week. At least that's what I tell myself. Next story going on in the world of sports is NFL training camp, NFL preseason camps, summer camps, uh, training camps are opening this week. And what we're going to notice over this week and next week, so don't be shocked, fans, is injuries. And I'm not talking COVID, I'm not talking people having to sit out, get no, uh, Q tips shoved up their nose twice a week and be allowed to come back once the test comes back negative. I'm talking legitimate sports injuries. It's going to happen. It's already happening. Don't be shocked by it. Get used to it. Um, there is, for those of you who may not know, the NFL has what are called OTAs. And if you don't know what OTA stands for, it's organized team activities. And these go on throughout the summer. Usually there's one in June. There's a rookie one that happens right after the draft. Then there's one in June. Then another one in a week in July. And then when they start training camp, these players are conditioned. So let's just say in June they have 10 days of OTAs. And then what their strength and conditioning coaches give them is a regimented routine. You're going to eat this. You're going to exercise like this. You're going to lift like this. X, Y, and Z. It's pretty much... Um, a script of how they're going to spend their day for 12 hours a day when they're not in training camps. Well, they don't have any preseason games. They haven't been having these OTAs. So what's going to happen? These guys are kind of left up to their own devices. And I get it. They're trained professional athletes. I don't think they're doing the wrong thing. These guys are millionaires. They're doing the right thing. However, you can't simulate, you know, these training conditions that they have right now. So even if a guy is doing everything he's supposed to, he's conditioning the way he's supposed to, he's not getting that hand-to-hand, -hand, face to face collision type atmosphere. So injuries are going to happen. You're going to see a lot of tweaking of hamstrings and quads, and you're going to see an ACL blown out um, on a team, you know, by a star player. It happens. Um, it's just what we got to deal with. I know that I was against 
uh, our my group of friends doing one of our fantasy drafts this week for that reason. However, regardless of when we do it, it everyone's in the same boat. We all have our players. Players are going to get hurt. Someone on one guy's team could get injured. My guys might be healthy or vice versa. We just got to deal with it and move on. Um, it was fun having the draft this past weekend. Everyone's got their team. Trash talking begins. Yada, yada, yada. It's all in good fun. I can't wait for the season to start on September 10th, Thursday night. Chiefs, Texans, and then uh, that's Sunday, Packers, Vikings. Uh, this, this is this is about, to, you know, so we're about a month away from that. This is when the Vikings fans start telling me that they're so much better, blah, blah, blah. This is our year. Yeah, it's a yearly ritual I've been dealing with. For, this is now the 17th or 18th year I've been dealing with this, living up here, having to deal with. I think that Vikings fans, instead of getting, you know, horns tattooed to them or skull or anything like that, they should just get the phrase, this is our year. That way they can use it over and over again and they don't have to, you know, be held to, you know, a certain standard because it is, you guys are, the Vikings fans are like the Chicago Cubs of the NFL. Now the Chicago Cubs did get their World Series championship. So who knows? Maybe when you're 80 or 90, Vikings will actually win their Super Bowl. It's going to happen. I can feel it, guys. Anyway, we're going to move on. Uh, done my ripping on Vikings fans for this week. You're better than that. And the you're better than that this week is something that I brought up and I wanted to do on Twist. Uh, the Week in Sports Talk, Matt and Mike did a great job of touching on this subject. Um, I had to go see about a girl, so I was not on the show. Um, life happens, folks. Um, I know everyone's probably depressed. Don't worry. I'll be back next week on Twist. Um, but Kyle Kuzma, uh, who plays for the Lakers, their number three star, uh, last week, Monday night, had a game-winning uh, three-pointer. They The Lakers ended up winning 124-121. to 121. And after the game, he's sticking out his chest. He's rocking his, pumping his chest, talking about all these different things, blah, 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 blah. And then says in a post-game interview that he was so hot, he would have still shot if Jesus himself would have de been defending him. Ladies and gentlemen, what Kyle Kuzma is trying to say is that Jesus Christ can't defend a jump shot. I tend to disagree. I think that my Lord and Savior can defend Kyle Kuzma's jump shot. Heck, I've seen him shoot. It takes him so, so long to get set up, I could defend his jump shot. My point to this whole thing, Kyle Kuzma, is know your role. LeBron James is the greatest player right now. LeBron James has championships with two different franchises. And with those franchises, they were set up the exact same way as the Lakers are set up right now. Hold on. Let's take a look at a comment here. Oh, Matty Benz gives me the F off Greg. Apparently, he did not like my comments about the Vikings. Tough, Matt. Going back to my Cal Kuzma comments. So, Cal Kuzma is making all these comments. He has a game-winning shot in the bubble, in a game that did not matter to the Lakers. There's one thing I can say to all you NBA fans about the Lakers and the Milwaukee Bucks. They didn't need to show up in the bubble other than to practice, other than to get ready for the playoffs. So anything that happened, whether it was a lack of defense by the Lakers or Giannis not being at full strength for the Bucks, they didn't need these games. They pretty much had the number one seed locked up. It doesn't matter. So with this, Kyle Kuzma has to understand is you need to start looking back in uh, old game film from when LeBron was on the Heat and when he was on the Cavaliers. You are playing the role of Kevin Love or Chris Bosh. Now, the difference between you and Kevin Love and Chris Bosh, Kyle Kuzma, is they knew their role. They knew they were the number three on those teams. LeBron James runs the show. When LeBron James was getting double teamed and triple teamed, he knew to pass the ball to Kyrie or to Dwayne Wade. And what happened? Kyle, um, sorry, Kevin Love and Chris Bosh picked up a lot of scraps and they did really well and they brought championships to their teams. What you're not doing by sticking out your chest and acting like your king, like your shit don't stink by hitting the game winning shot in a game that doesn't matter is you're not showing that you know your role. Know your role, son. You're not doing that great of a job of knowing your role. Sit back, pick up your scraps. You're the little kid. You're, you're sitting at the kiddie table at Thanksgiving. 
the Lakers could win a championship, but not if you're taking the ball when LeBron needs it and when LeBron needs to dish it to AD. You're just getting in the way of yourself and you're getting in the way of your team winning a championship if you're shooting off your mouth like that. Get back at the kitty table. All right, let's go into the GBG moment of Zen. The moment of Zen this week goes to one of the greatest, and I don't like to speak in hyperbole, although I tend to do it every now and again, the greatest comeback stories I've heard of in my lifetime. Alex Smith, who's the quarterback of the Washington Red football team, uh, had the, one of the most horrific injuries I've ever seen. He broke several bones in his leg. There was actually a while there where they were worried about his life. Not whether or not he'd lose his leg, but he was losing so much blood and there were blood clots that they were worried about his life. And that doesn't happen in sports injuries a lot. A lot of times you worry about, will this player ever be able to play again? But Alex's Smith was uh, life was on the line for a while uh, after this horrific injury a couple years, a couple years ago. And after I think it was last count, and I looked it up earlier today, it was 17 surgeries. Um, and so after 17 surgeries, he's now back, and he was cleared within the past couple of days to participate in team activities. What, they're, what the doctors are saying is he can take a hit. He can take a football hit. Now, does that mean that he'd be ready for week one tomorrow or this being the second full week in August? Of course not. They'll be able to analyze him and evaluate him. But this could be the greatest thing to happen to the Washington Red football team uh, with what they're doing. Dwayne Haskins could use another year to sit back and watch a starter. And they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. So let's let Alex Smith show him the ropes. Alex Smith was drafted number one overall, had a great career in with the 49ers, didn't win a Super Bowl, but sure as heck took his team to the playoffs and did well. Then he went to the Kansas City Chiefs where he did really well. And then they pushed him aside for what might be seen as the greatest quarterback of all time. We'll give it some time. Once again, I'm not a hyperbole guy, but you know, Pat Mahomes is, you know, looking like he's the real deal. So that um, Alex Smith goes on to the Washington Red football team. And, uh, you know, let's see if his comeback happens. I'm actually really rooting for him. The fact that he was cleared for team activities, they should already not only give him the Comeback Player of the Year award, they should name the damn award after him. So let's just see if we got some other comments here that are worth showing on the page. We got Justin who's saying a lot of things here um, that was designed. I don't know if that was dealing with Kyle Kuzma. Sorry, I didn't notice that right away. Um, now let's uh, – okay, that's funny. Stepsis the starter. That's a, Yeah, blood. it's a blood disease is what he kind of took in, uh, Alex Smith. Good call. They should make T-shirts like that in Washington, D.C. Now we got Dan Lenahan coming in here. Is Alex Smith actually going to start? We're a month away, Dan. Um, I don't know, um, but what any coach will tell you is what they want more than anything else is options. And what Alex Smith gives them is options. You're not looking with. You're not looking down the barrel of Dwayne Haskins and nothing else. You now have options. So uh, that's my moment of Zen. Let's get into. Outside the arena, this is where GBG gets himself into some hot water and gets himself political. So two weeks ago on Twist, my final thought had to do with two different types of leadership. And the way I talked about it was people standing up and being a leader when a leadership position needed, raising their hand saying, I'll lead. And then in other situations where people just naturally gra gravitate to someone because they expose or they express leadership characteristics and different situations call for different things. I talked about Mike and Matt in different situations and how the, the leadership styles that they showed were perfect for the situations I was talking about. Now, let's talk about politics versus sports. 
Here's what we have here in the world of politics. We have Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and other Democrats who are standing on top of every soapbox and every mountaintop screaming to all high heavens, telling us what to do with COVID and this, that. But who don't you have? Joe freaking Biden, who's actually going to be running for the leadership position of this country. That floors me. You have Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and the rest of these clowns that are telling us, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, do this, don't do that. Six, eight months ago, they're standing on every rooftop and every soapbox trying to impeach Donald Trump to no avail. Now, I'm not telling you who to vote for, but what I am telling you is in a leadership position, I want my leader to be leading. I don't want my second and third and fourth in command to be telling people what to do from a leadership standpoint. Joe Biden is nowhere to be found. On the other hand, on the Republican side, you have Donald Trump, who is in front of every camera, every tweet machine, every microphone, telling people what his feelings are. You may not like it, but here's what I realized is when you really break down everything from Joe Biden, it's when push comes to shove, he's nowhere to be found because his own party doesn't even trust him. And on the other hand, you have Donald Trump, who, what's his worst crime in office? He's hurting your feelings. I don't care. I want my leadership to be a hard ass. When I was in high school, my football coach hurt my feelings sometimes, telling me, Greg, you're better than that. You should have did that route this way. That was 11 yard out, not a 10 yard out. That was this. And that was on the microcosm of football. We also went 12 and 0 and won the state championship. And I was an insignificant player on the team. But he cared about me enough to tell me and to get in my face and not tell me everything is going to be okay. He told me, you can do better than that. Where is the leadership from the Democratic Party? He's silent. You have your underlings taking the leadership role. That, that, that should tell you a lot, Democrats, who, who you want to vote for. Now, let's revert that to the world of sports. We have college football. We have the five major conferences. And now what happened last week? The Big Ten and the Pac-12 bowed out. They said, we're not playing football this year. And what does the SEC, ACC, and Big 12 do? Hey, we're going to keep playing, but what aren't you hearing? One defined voice, one leader. So what do you have? You have Justin Fields, quarterback from one of the most prolific sporting pro or football programs in the Big Ten, the Ohio State, getting close to 250,000 signatures protesting, saying, we want to play. Why is he even in this position? I mean, I credit him. I'm not bashing him for doing this. But at some point, he should be playing football and the leadership should be giving a reason as to why they're not or why they don't or, you know, what's going on. Justin Fields is a 19, 20, 21-year-old kid, whatever he is. He's a college kid. He's a college quarterback. He shouldn't have to be in a leadership role. He should be playing football. Coaches, administrators executives from the league should be saying we either are or aren't because of this and then stand by it. The, the, right now, the five leaders are like a, are like the little weasel in a bar fight. They throw the first punch and then they hide behind the bar and watch all their buddies start fighting. You guys made your decision. Now you're hiding behind a rock. Make your decision, get in front of a damn microphone and answer all the damn questions. Don't make your players like Justin Fields have to answer these questions. Like he's saying, there's 50-year seniors who came back because they want to play. Tell them why they're not and answer to their face. And tell them why you're not and why the SEC and ACC and Big 12 isn't. I'm not telling you they shouldn't, they shouldn't. I'm saying that these kids deserve an answer. Now let's go to, before I get into my final thought and my GBG challenge, Let's go to the GBG, which I just instituted as of five seconds ago. This is now the GBG fan of the week. My boy, Justin, 
Love it, GBG. You're right. I do too. Sorry, sometimes I got to get a little political. This is what happens when I lay off a twist for a week. I don't show up on twist and I got all these, I'm like a volcano of emotion. So I got to get it all out and I do it on a Monday afternoon. So here we go with the GBG challenge of the week. Now, this is going to be a little serious, but I'm going to get passionate about it. We are living in a day and age where a lot of people get their news and they get their stories from uncon unconfirmed and unsourced media outlets, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, different podcasts like mine, different blogs. What I'm asking you to do is find two sources. It's a famous story. And for those of you who don't, don't follow sports and kind of, you know, watch this more for like how me going off on a rant every now and again, there was a story, I had forgot how long ago it was, but there was a um, radio guy who's really famous in the sports world. He used to be with ESPN, now he's with NBC Sports, has a radio show, Dan Patrick, famous guy. And he had catcher A.J. Pruszynski coming on his show. Him and A.J. Pruszynski are really good friends off camera, off the microphone. And A.J. Pruszynski, about 10 minutes before he was going to go on Dan Patrick's show, and this was like 15 years ago was going to go on Dan Patrick's show. It was a scheduled interview. He said, hey, Dan, you want to you know, land a big story? I just got traded five minutes ago. And it was, he got traded, this guy and this guy for this guy, blah, blah, blah. Dan Patrick's response was, I need a second source. AJ Pruszynski said, I just told you I got traded. Why do you need a second source? I am the source. And Dan Patrick said, I'm sorry, it's just the way we do things. So he couldn't report the story and they couldn't talk about it in the interview, even though he was the one getting traded. He needed a second source. Now, we are living in a, in a climate right now where people are talking about, you know, making pedophilia um, a, a, a sexual orientation that's accepted by society. We're talking about, you know, cop shootings, which really aren't that. We're talking about, you know, children getting killed in cold blood and we're, who are these reliable sources that we're taking people's facebook accounts people's twitter accounts because we can't trust mainstream media and i don't blame people for not trusting mainstream media but what i'm asking people to do if you see something whether it's on facebook or twitter or instagram or whatever it is follow it up and look it up i thought that mike reeves from twist on saturday did a great job of this Greg Popovich from the San Antonio Spurs had a story, talked about something, and put a lot of words into people's mouths. And I usually respect Greg Popovich because he's a crotchety old man who's been coaching since the beginning of time. But he made a lot of outlandish comments in a post-game interview that just weren't true. So what did Mike do? Mike looked it up, researched it, found the autopsy report on what Greg Popovich was talking about and contradicted a lot of what he said. I'm saying that we live in a day and age where we have all of this information at our fingertips. If you hear a story that there was a police, that there was someone was shot in a police involved shooting, might want to double check before you start blaring and starting a riot in the, in, in, you know, a city. I'm not saying that George Floyd wasn't that I'm saying that there's other instances and there's situations where they might say police involved shooting. And you find out that some idiot shot himself in the arm because he was shooting at the cops and the idiot shot himself in the arm. And they reported it as a police involved shooting and the police never pulled out their guns. I'm not saying it's happened. And I'm not saying it's not, I'm saying that things like that happen. But, you, but what we're believing as a society is we don't want to be right. We want to be first. We want the information to post on our Facebook pages and our Twitter pages. We want to be the first one to do it. We don't want to be accurate. And what I'm asking people to do is be accurate because lives are on the line. People's careers are on the line. People are getting hurt. Their businesses are being torn apart. You know, livelihoods are being wrecked. Why? Because people are jumping on stories and not looking for credibility and validation for those stories. I'm going off on a tangent here. I'm sorry, because there's really serious stories going on in the news right now. Like I said at the beginning of this segment, there's a lot of stories going around right now about pedophilia being recognized as an acceptable sexual orientation, which, by the way, I have a nine year old son and 12 year old daughter. If anyone, thinks that pedophilia is a sexual orientation that should be accepted, come talk to me. And I'm not, I'm not mixing words. 
I will end you if you get anywhere near my kids, if you believe that. I'm sorry that I'm like, say it. And I will smile on my way to prison. Um, no one will hurt my children like that. So we need to put an end to that type of stuff. Also, if you're posting stuff on Facebook or on Twitter about that and you are defending children, God bless you and good for you. But pay attention to who you're voting for in November because one of the candidates is a little inappropriate on kids. And I don't think it's, you know, the rich guy who's sitting in the White House right now. Sorry, going off on a tangent here. I'm getting, I'm done. I'm fired up. So anyway, I appreciate everyone for listening to the show. Like I always started off with sports, tried to blend it into some mainstream society. I apologize if I got a little too up. No, you know, you know what? No, I don't. I don't apologize. If someone else is allowed to go out there and talk on a tangent and talk out of their ass, so am I. Either you like it or you hate it. Deal with it. Thanks for joining me. As always, God bless. Thanks for joining in. Till next week or till Saturday on Twist and in the following week on GBG. Thanks for joining me.